What's good ramen lovers and nerds? Today we're gonna make our first double stock soup and try out a recipe from one of the most legendary ramen chefs of all time, Sano-san, who is known for a strict ramen shop that made some of the best ramen around for years and was truly ahead of the game. Today we're gonna learn how to make shio or salt ramen, so let's get right into it. To start off, we're gonna make the shio tare, which is what is gonna give our soup the most flavor. Now before I get into the main video, I wanna go over the basics of ramen, since for new ramen makers, it's very important for you to understand this. So what makes a bowl of ramen great is these five things, all being done and executed beautifully. So the first thing we're gonna make is the tare, or the seasoning and maiden flavor punch to the soup. And shio means salt in Japanese, so this soup will have a salt-based tare. Next is our aromatic oil, which will add a great fragrant smell to the bowl and also add some flavor. For this ramen personally, I made an oil that is two thirds pork lard and one third vegetable oil with some minced garlic fried in the oils. I used this oil because the broth I made was supposed to have some pork fat boiled in it and I couldn't find just pork fat. So this is my little trick to incorporate that flavor and smell into the soup. Next is the actual soup itself or the broth, which usually is the longest part of making ramen. This is where you'll boil meat and bones and dried fish along with vegetables for hours and hours to make the broth, which is about 90% of the whole soup. In the broth, you don't add any seasonings because the tare already has that. Then the fourth part of the basics is my personal favorite part, which is the toppings. Usually ramen has chashu, ajitama or flavored egg, menba, which is bamboo shoots, bean sprouts, green onions, and a sheet of seaweed or nori in it. Now for this ramen, I only have homemade chashu, a runny egg that is not flavored, and green onions for garnish. Now the last and final step is one of the most important steps to most people that make ramen, and that is the noodle. There's high hydration noodles and low hydration noodles, which both have their benefits and cons that I won't go into too much right now. But for this ramen, I usually make my own with a pasta machine, but since I'm still learning and it's always inconsistent, for these videos, I bought some freshly made noodles from Sun Noodles, which are really great quality and come in extremely fresh. Now that we explained the basics, let's get into making the Shio ramen. Okay, we're back on track to the Shio Tare. You're gonna place some kombu in about 700 milliliters of water and leave it in your fridge overnight. Bring out that kombu and put it onto medium low heat and heat it until it's about to boil. While it's heating up, weigh about 35 grams of bonito flakes. I use hanokasu, followed by 165 grams of salt, and for salt, I'm using Hawaiian rock salt. Then right when it's about to boil, remove the kombu, then you're gonna add your bonito flakes and turn on the heat down to low for five minutes and let the bonito flakes extract all that flavor. Now, after the five minutes of extracting the flavor, you're going to drain the bonito flakes out. Now, all these measurements that I've told you for the salt and everything was based on the fact that you're gonna need 500 milliliters of this extracted water at the end. So when you drain, make sure you have that 500 milliliters of water and make sure you also drain those bonito flakes for as much water as you can because that's where most of the flavor is. Once you have the 500 milliliters, add it back into the pot on medium low heat. Next, you're gonna add your 165 grams of salt, also add 100 milliliters of sake, 30 milliliters of mirin, and 10 milliliters of vinegar. Now stir this thing and show some love while the salt dissolves, and when it does, you can take it off the heat and transfer it to a bowl, I have a glass bowl, and let it cool down. Now I covered this, threw this in the fridge for a bit. Once it came down to about room temperature, you add 30 milliliters of shoyu or soy sauce, mix and save it for later. Up next is the aromatic oil. This one is really simple and pretty much all the aromatic oils you do are gonna be very simple in comparison to the rest of the things you do when you make ramen. 
So I added 90 milliliters of pork lard, followed by 30 milliliters of vegetable oil. Then I just threw in some minced garlic in there to fry and give it a little bit more of a nutty flavor to it and add to the overall aroma. Now, just pay attention to your garlic and mix it often because I didn't and it burnt pretty badly, which I personally didn't mind because it gave it even more of that nuttiness flavor that I was looking for, but I'd rather it not all be burnt. Now when it's done, just strain out the garlic and cool it down for later. Now like I said earlier, I don't have the pork fat that I needed for my broth. So this aromatic oil containing mostly pork lard is going to add that pork fattiness and give it that smell and a little bit of that flavor that I was looking for in my broth that I couldn't obtain. So that's why I chose this aromatic oil. You guys can do something different, but for this personal recipe, this is what I did. Finally, we can move on to the broth. Now I don't have the video of the broth being made because I actually didn't record all the ingredients you need. But I just want to tell you that you need 110 kilograms of chicken backs, 200 kilograms of chicken legs, and I have about 400 grams of pork shank with aromatics such as cabbage, ginger, garlic, onion, and carrot. Now that's going to be for our one stock. Our second stock will be a dashi. So you once again want to place some kombu in water overnight. This time I'm adding about one liter of water with 26 grams of kombu and also a few dried shiitake mushrooms. I'll get into that dashi stock later, but make sure you start making that before you make your pork and chicken stock just so it will be ready to go because you pretty much have to steep that kombu in the water overnight or for at least four to six hours. So moving back to the first stock, we're gonna blanch the chicken backs and legs in boiling water for 30 seconds then remove it. After the chicken, you wanna drain the water and fill your stock pot back up with water Bring it to a boil, then blanch your pork bones for about 3 minutes. Then remove the pork bones, clean them, cool them down, and then once again you're going to remove the water from the stock pot, bring the empty stock pot, and then you're going to fill it with this order. Chicken bones first, followed by the pork bones, followed by the aromatics, which are half of a yellow onion, one whole carrot, one head of cabbage. 16 grams of ginger, and about 6 cloves of garlic. Fill all of this with about 5 liters of water, and once the water is in, you're going to want to add a little bit more fishiness to it, so we're going to add about 16 grams of dried shrimp. Put this on medium heat and bring it to a boil. When it comes to a boil, we're going to get our dashi ready. Weigh out about 36 grams of bonito flakes, then bring out your steeping kombu and shiitake mushrooms from the fridge and just like we did with the tare, put this on medium low heat and bring it up just before it begins boiling then you're going to remove the kombu and add your bonito flakes. Once the bonito flakes are added, kill the heat and cover it and let this all steep together until you're ready to add it to your other stock. Now, once your first stock with the chicken, pork, and aromatics is boiling, scum will start to rise. There will be some which is just white fat, which is good and you don't really want to remove. Then there will be this brown scum, which if it isn't removed, will negatively impact your stock's flavor by making it more bitter and just, it's not a good flavor. So, descum your stock for about 20 to 30 minutes or until you notice the brown scum really isn't coming up anymore and that the stock that looks overall pretty clean. Put it on medium low heat and drain your dashi into the stock. Now, like I said, you want to do this after. I would say you should be descumming for about 20 to 30 minutes and then give it about 10 minutes and see how much brown scum rises. If a little bit, like a very tiny bit comes up, you're fine. Like a little bit won't completely kill the broth. It's okay. But you should do your best to remove as much as you can. And sometimes the brown scum will interact with that white fat and you really can't do anything about it. You don't have to remove both of them together. But generally, about after 20 or 30 minutes, it should be good. But just give it like 5 or 10 minutes or so afterwards and just make sure nothing uh, really comes up. And if nothing comes up, you're good. And then we're going to add this dashi stock. So you're going to drain the bonito flakes uh, from the dashi stock. So just have a strainer over your stock pot. Bring your other pot with the dashi, strain it over, and you'll be good to go. Now after you do this, this is the important part. You want to put it on medium low to low heat, 
and let it just all come together just let it go for four hours i made the mistake by you know mixing stuff around a lot which was pretty bad because overall later on when you're trying to get the broth out you could just ladle you know it slowly and bring it together and then drain the last bit but since i kind of over stirred it i would say i pretty much just you know got all the meat all over the places the bones are all over the place so now i have to strain everything because i can't just get clean ladles of broth out so that's one thing that the recipe i looked at does uh that i didn't do as well so now the four hours has passed and it's time to strain this thing like i said i mix it up too much so just ladling most of it out is not an option for me so i got the double strainer going on and i'm just gonna slowly pour this into my pot transfer it and then we're gonna get the bones and aromatics out and just squeeze all the juice we can get out and get this lovely golden brown soup this is the like most golden soup i have made i've only made about five or six different types of broths but man this has been a beautiful beautiful process and the final result came out very well i'm very happy with it it tastes amazing Sano-san definitely knows what he was doing. Now, Way of Ramen has explained in the video that I really learned this from, that we're not 100% sure this is what he used in his restaurant, but this is his recipe. So shout out to Sano-san, may he rest in peace. And you know, the demon of ramen definitely knew what he was doing. So for the chashu, I'm using Ramen Lord's recipe. It's on his Instagram and I'll link it below. So I'm not gonna go super in depth with it, but it's something that beginners like you and me can make. So I added two cups of soy sauce, four cups of water, some cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of brown sugar, uh, a fourth a cup of mirin and sake, and I brought it to a boil, then I let it simmer for two hours. After that, you wanna let it rest for 30 minutes. After about 20 minutes, turn on your oven to 450, let it preheat for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then add your chashu in for about 15 to 20 minutes, and halfway flip it. It'll come out like this, it's so delicious. Now that braising liquid you had, you don't wanna get rid of, keep it. Let the chashu cool down, make sure the braising liquid is cooled down, and let it sit and cool down together, probably in the fridge for about four to six hours. Then you can slice it, and look how beautiful and delicious this looks. This is definitely, out of probably like the three or four uh, recipes that I've tried several times since I started making ramen, it's my favorite one and it's the most delicious one to me. And it's so simple, that's what makes it so great. So that's what it is when it comes to chashu, that's what I like to use. When it comes to noodles, I've used Way of Ramen's uh, noodle recipe a few times and I like it, but just making the noodles can be a hassle and I don't want to do it every time. So I bought some fresh ramen noodles from Sun Noodle. Now, if you guys don't want to spend that extra money for the you know convenience of having good fresh noodles made for you, I completely understand. You can check out in the description below Way of Ramen's uh, you know noodle recipe that anyone can make. It's super simple. Uh, but for me, especially when I'm making these videos and testing things out for the first time. I'm adding a lot of my time and I'm kind of in unfamiliar territory. So I don't want to, you know, spend a bunch of extra time making noodles. So I buy these from Sun Noodles. You can buy these. They don't come with any seasoning. They're like two to three bucks each. And you get two servings of 140 grams of noodles. So I want to shout out Sun Noodles for their amazing noodles. I love ordering from them. Now that we have everything out of the way, we are going to make the ramen. So my broth is super hot, and what I do is I add some to the bowl just to get the bowl hot and ready before I actually put everything in. So I had my girlfriend record this, and it wasn't the best quality, and everything was all over the place because I was making everything. You can see the sink was completely empty when I started today. So we're gonna add our shiotare. I added only about 10 milliliters. I think I ended up adding 15. Uh, just because I wanted a little bit more flavor, but you should only add 10 as that's what the recipe calls for Then I added about 10 milliliters of my aromatic oil So we got that in there add that fragrance add that you know beautiful smell and that pork lard flavor And then we're gonna add 300 milliliters of broth now I have this measuring cup since I'm not the best 
currently at, you know, eyeballing this. And I don't have a ladle that actually has measurements on it. So you definitely want to go and get some ladles that have measurements on it so you don't have to waste all this time like I am. So you add your broth to your tare and aromatic oil in your bowl and it's pretty much ready to go. We just got to add the noodles. These are the sun noodles and I boiled them for a minute and 50 seconds. Now I'm trying to drain all the water I can because you want the noodles to suck up as much broth as they possibly can. And if they're still waterlogged, and it's going to be you know, a hard time doing that. So there we go. We got our noodles in. And I'm going to move these around a little bit so it's easier to place my toppings on top so my you know, toppings don't sink. Um, this is a really big bowl, so most people probably won't have as big a bowl as this. So I'm trying to do the noodle fold, but I am still a noob myself, so my noodle fold is uh, not the best. But I do what I can, you know... Try and just make sure the bowl is covered for the most part so it's easier to get this going. Now, the runny egg, I don't really want to explain because you should know how to boil an egg. I boiled mine for a minute, uh, six minutes and 30 seconds, excuse me, and ice bath them right afterwards. And here they are. They're a little bit runny, they're cooked through, delicious. I don't flavor my eggs a lot of the times just because it seems unnecessary to me when I'm just doing these test bowls, but it is what it is. So we got our chashu, we got our egg, we got our green onions, and that's my bowl of ramen. And hopefully I taught you so you can do this yourself and it comes out delicious. But man, let me just tell you, after eating this ramen, this is the best bowl of ramen I made myself. I haven't had a shio ramen since I went to Tokyo about two years ago, and it's the first time I really had shio ramen was in Tokyo because it's a really Tokyo, you know, style of ramen. And let me tell you, this was delicious. By far the best bowl I made at home. I recommend this recipe uh, to anyone who makes ramen at home. Anyone who hasn't had shio ramen, because finding good shio ramen in America is not easy, especially if you don't live in somewhere like California. Hawaii, New York City, places like that. So, yeah, this bowl was delicious. Sano san, may he rest in peace. The ramen demon, definitely, you know, passing this recipe on. And uh, someone like Way of Ramen, you know, showing it to everyone. Huge shout outs to everyone who made this recipe possible in the public's hands. And uh, hopefully, you guys get to making some delicious ramen at home. But thank you for watching. Keep on slurping. I'll see you next time.